I've been doing the ketogenic diet, hardcore, never cheating, for two years. And I know a lot of people that I'm helping with a ketogenic diet. And so many people ask me what I eat and ask me to do a video on what I eat. What I eat is very practical, very simple, and very easy and efficient. It is not a whole lot of variety, but it's a whole lot of quality. All of the animal food that's involved, all of it, is pasture-raised, and all of the plant food is organic. I generally alternate on and off every other day between a really, uh, my big meal is a really rich omelet, and every other day in between that, usually my big meal is some form of really easy, practical, grass-fed beef. Occasionally, there's some uh, wild-caught fish, and there are also, usually the second mini-meal is some form of a salad, which I'm going to show you. And really, uh, and I have headings before each actual true recipe where I show you how to make it in this video. Um, Everything has, has, like I said, has a heading and it tells you what's coming up next. So, you know, don't get caught up in all this keto stuff and all the things called keto and all the things with, that are processed and have all kinds of ingredients. It really, it'll be too complicated. It'll be too expensive. It won't be nutritious enough. and It'll probably have too many carbs. So I have a headings for every item that I make. Just remember, I alternate mainly between the big meals being um, some form of eggs and the other one being some form of grass-fed beef. And I also include um, my fat bombs in there, and sometimes my mini meal is not a, a uh, rich salad, but it's uh, um, fat bombs and a couple other items. In the description below the title of the video will be important links. When I mention my ketogenic drinks for digestion, look for the link to know how to make it and why. When I mention stevia, I have a video called The Best Stevias on the Market. Look for that. And I have a video called My Best Fat Bombs. Yeah, that's important because it comes they come in really handy. So remember, please, look for the links. And check out my, my list, my playlist called Ketogenic. It has well over 100 videos, most of which are made by some of the most fantastic functional medicine doctors and researchers. But a lot of them are made by me, too. So check it out, and hey, if you don't want to know what I eat, just turn this off now. It's really designed for all those people that ask me what I eat on my ketogenic diet. Fifteen minutes to a half hour before we eat, we are both going to drink a dandelion salad, which if we did not have the other salad afterward would be plenty vegetables, and with plenty uh, vegetable nutrients uh, to have with the protein and fat. Why dandelion salad? We put, uh, we, we put our dandelion in a Vitamix with water to uh, mix it and turn it into a salad that you drink because you get maximum digestion of it that way. We grow our own dandelion, organically have for a very long time and uh, we compost it ourselves with kitchen scraps and seaweed. So this is extremely, impo uh, extremely potent. And this is a quart jar. I will um, uh, juice, otherwise blend really, um, about two of these, maybe a little bit more than this, twice a week, so that every uh, first meal we have a dandelion salad, which digests better than kale. During our meals, we sip a certain drink called ketogenic drinks for digestion. We sip it because it aids in digestion and it happens to also be full of vitamins and minerals. The contents are Bragg's Organic Apple Cider Vinegar, Organic Fresh Squeezed Lemon Juice, and Fresh Ginger and even some um, of the Redmond's Real Salt because salt actually helps you make your hydrochloric acid. And to understand really what they're for and, and how to make them, just see my video called Ketogenic Drinks for Digestion. The picture here shows them before we've added any stevia. Well, 
in the next picture, it, they kind of turn green because you'll see that the stevia that we use in them now is uh, organic green stevia leaf powder. Here they are. They're green now because I put organic green stevia leaf powder in them instead of other stevia because it tastes okay and it, and it has a lot of vitamins and minerals. I got it from here. I need to refill this. You see how green it is. This comes from Mountain Rose Herbs. And I do have a video called The Best Stevias on the Market. In a large cast iron skillet, which is approximately 12 inches across, I start by melting approximately one quarter cup of ghee. And that would be for two pounds of ground beef. And you could use uh, one eighth of a cup if you were to do only one pound at a time. This is the ghee that I use. I heat it at, on medium heat, see that? For two minutes just to get it to melt. Safety, I let it finish melting after the heat is turned off and it will stay off until I actually put the ground beef in. This is two pounds of grass-fed ground beef. 85% lean, 15% fat, before I break it up and before I turn the heat back on. I broke it up with this flat ended spatula so that it will not cook in clumps and I will keep it broken up as I go. I, oops, there goes the spatula. I just poured in one cup of water into the two pounds of beef so that it will not fry but it will saute. Heat on medium because a cast iron skillet gets hotter because it's cast iron. I turn it on medium and it's working on its first five minutes there. I will periodically turn it off so I can stir it without it splattering and turn the heat and the timer back on until it is brown and not pink anymore and completely safe to eat, germ-wise, and, um, well, this will take about maybe a total of 10 to 15 minutes. That's my five-minute timer, and as you can see, it's not splashing out of the pan, but substantially cooking, and it's time to turn it over. I turned it all over and then broke it back up again with this flat-ended spatula to be sure that it all is uh, cooking evenly and, and it's kind of smashed back down into the liquid. The timer is on for another five minutes while I do other things in the kitchen. As it gets hotter and starts to cook more aggressively, I will put a splatter guard on it like this to keep my kitchen clean and reduce cleanup. Then I will turn the heat off for a couple minutes to let it settle down and then I will stir it again. Another option to this would be just to turn the heat down to about one quarter uh, of the level of total heat on your dial, which would be about to here, somewhere in here. But I, I like to turn it off with the splatter guard on just because I like the least amount of cleanup. And as soon as it, uh, the, the sautéing settles down a little bit, I will turn it back on. Switch to a, uh, a large spoon because the next step, after I turn this off and stir it one more time, it's been probably a total of cooking time of about 10 minutes after the melting of the ghee. And then I'm going to let it cool. Another reason for changing from the spatula to the spoon is that the spatula was in there touching the raw meat and the spoon was not, which keeps it extra sanitary. The heat is now off. Doesn't look off, but it's really off. And now it shall cool, but I only decided that because there was no more pink left in it. This is the finished product, which will make approximately six servings where each serving of cooked weight is about five and a half ounces. Here is an example of two servings 
I do this because I make my husband's lunch ahead of time for several days and you'll notice that it looks like there's a gravy in there. That liquid is ghee, water, and the actual beef broth or gravy and it will generally solidify pretty much when in the refrigerator. So it also comes in handy when I reheat my portion in a pot. I don't have to add any water or anything like that to reheat it and it's slightly a little bit soupy or a little bit stew like but that means I don't have to fry it when I reheat it and I can retain uh, the nutrients and not destroy them by being overly uh, charred. My husband likes them topped with one half cup of organic raw sauerkraut that means unpasteurized and then one ounce approximately of grated cheese that is organic, raw, and grass-fed, which is this brand. That's in here. I reheat mine in a small pot instead, um, and then I either sprinkle raw butter and or a little raw cheese on mine. I like my cabbage uh, in a salad in the, not in the sauerkraut form, just in ch with chopped cabbage. This is my personal serving, which I'm having for my big meal today. It is equivalent to about two medium burgers. This is what my serving looks like before I add my raw organic pasture raised cheese. And this is the point at which I stir in some salt because I don't like to overheat my salt and damage any nutrients. And here it is, it's been salted and I put on approximately one ounce of raw organic pasture raised cheese. Again, organic pastures brand. And by the way, I had or drank my homegrown down the line salad prior to uh, heating this and uh, took my supplements with that. I'm putting together a ketogenic salad which has two purposes. One is as a mini meal by itself, as in like a half meal or a very small meal. And the other purpose is like when you have a main dish that's not particularly high in protein and or fat and on the smaller side of medium large and then you want to add um, some more nutrition to it. Even Lilu likes the droppings. Lilu, Lilu, hey, do you want some more celery? Okay, right now what we have in it is just approximately one cup of very relatively, I should say, finely chopped organic celery. You guys want some cabbage? This is my odd couple. Lilu, Vito, is it good? Hey, you guys. You want some more cabbage? You want more cabbage? I've added a cup of chopped organic cabbage to each bowl and then I'm going to mix them and get ready for their dressing and topping. Here they are mixed before our dressing and our topping and um, this can be made either with just celery or just cabbage, organic of course, and both of them keep very well in the refrigerator. Both of them are much more digestible than kale. Sorry, Dr. Berg. And they're very affordable for organic vegetables. Can't beat that. They keep well, they digest well relative to other vegetables, and they're not expensive. This is where we put generous amounts of salt on, at least so, uh, probably a, an eighth of a teaspoon at least on each salad. This is the Redmond Real Salt, which you hear me mention all the time. This is the garlic that I use when it's not fresh, organic mountain rose uh, garlic powder. And my husband does not currently like or is not currently in the mood for garlic right now. So I'm going to take about, well, not quite that much, on my salad, maybe a quarter teaspoon and just sprinkle it lightly. It's actually really good if you like garlic. Next is lemon juice. This right here is the fresh organic that we squeeze ourselves. And this one here is an organic alternative that you can buy that's pasteurized. 
and um, there's uh, nothing in it but pure lemon juice. This is a soup spoon, which is a little smaller than a tablespoon. I'm, we're going to use the fresh squeeze, and I'm going to put three tablespoons on each one because it's so good when it's, or three soup spoons, a little less than three tablespoons on each one because it's so good. And it keeps it fresh, by the way. Lemon juice is a natural preservative. It's just so good when it's really lemony. And of course, lemon aids all kinds of things. Next is olive oil for the man size for my husband. It didn't like the garlic over here. I will put two soup spoons of garlic. Haven't stirred it yet. I ideally should have before the oil hit it. I say of garlic. Two soup spoons of organic cold pressed olive oil. I'm going to use this spoon. To, I'm going to only take one more of a ladies amount because I'd rather save my fat for having more fat on my protein. I like to pre-stir them so that uh, everything is just mixed really well before the the topping gets added. And of course I only stir it one more time and I'll show you why. Next if you want a little extra protein and uh, uh, fatty nutrients, um, A, D, E, and K, and even a little bit of essential fatty acids, this is the cheese that we use. And I put approximately just one ounce on here, which is about what I have in my hand, and maybe a little more. Adds great flavor, helps keep the lemon juice from about that much. The lemon juice from uh, just sinking to the bottom, it gives it a little bit something to stick to, to keep your salad really uh, tart. This is mine, I have a little less than my husband. But. Next, I stir it really well, and any of that lemon juice that made the dressing on the thinner side that sunk to the bottom generally gets absorbed into the cheese like that. This is four ounces of uh, organic toasted pumpkin seeds which we buy in bulk, uh, vacuum sealed and then keep the bulk of it in the refrigerator or freezer and toast them ourselves. And I put this much on the top of each salad. It will Excuse the phone, it will not be mixed anymore because it will get these a little soggy and we like to leave them on top. This is my jar in between, the large jar and the dispenser jars. I'm going to put this approximate four ounces on this salad and I want to show you that we toast so much at one time that we generally fill this jar, whoops, this jar and this one, the size of a jar, which is a few pounds at least, we generally fill this with toasted seeds every two weeks. When I personally have my second meal, one of these, the one with garlic, is absolutely plenty. And it is considered, for me, a half meal, a mini meal, a small second meal, the reason we're doing this today is it's an unusual day. Someone actually caught and gave us wild uh, salmon from Alaska, and it's not a real big dose, so that's why we're having this with it today. Grilling the wild-caught Alaskan salmon right now, and thank you, Beth, for catching it and bringing it to us. Here we have it. It's a feast day. This is all of it, all together. Our main dish with butter melting on top, our salads, and our ketogenic drinks for digestion. Probably won't need to eat again today. We are melting in two tablespoons of organic pasture raised ghee, which is this brand right here. 
Organic Valley. Um, even though you saw the seal, I took it out of this jar that has no label on it. Okay, the reason for this, um, and two minutes are up, okay, is to get it really melted and well distributed while whisking the eggs. So now that it's been two minutes, I'm going to shut it off. Notice it was only halfway up because the cast iron skillet gets a lot hotter than other types of skillets. So it's being turned off while I whip the eggs up. I have, for most adults here, that's what we use, three organic pasture-raised eggs. They could be a little more orange in there. It depends on the season and the brand. And I'm going to whip them up. And when I get them sort of done, but not completely done, I will go over to the stove and I will turn on that ghee for two minutes. It's been pre-melted, pre but this is the time we fire it up to get it hot and ready for the eggs to go in. Okay, that is going on for two minutes. And at two minutes, the eggs will be ready to go in. This is the cheese that we're going to use. Organic pastures, which you've seen before in my other videos. Um, we're gonna put in approximately two ounces of cheese on these um, these omelets simply because it's a main meal. Most of the times a serving of cheese is uh, around an ounce on, for most purposes. Okay. Did you hear that? That's a timer. We're ready to put it on. Okay, this is ready and this is ready. It's hot. There's a way to tell by looking at it if it's hot and ready to receive the eggs. My stove isn't perfectly level, so I'm doing this before I pour it on there. And um, notice it's still on medium heat. If it starts to cook too quickly, I will turn it down just a hair. Want to get it all, excuse me. And oh, it looks good. See the fact that it's bubbling it means I'm going to turn it down to about four, four and a half, just a little below. Um, below high. Since my stove uniquely because of the way it leans slightly and the fact that we haven't bothered leveling it yet, I'm going to turn this around. If that ever happens to you, turn it around and you'll see it cooked more on that side. So now I actually turned it to compensate. A few little bit of bubbles up underneath there are okay, but you want it to cook evenly so you may have to control your dial. Of course that depends on your range. We like the coils because uh, the cast iron um, is pretty rough on gl glass tops. Okay, so we're gonna um, turn the film off for a second until it gets ready. In about a minute and a half, two minutes, it'll be ready to flip. Notice it's cooking more right on this side, so I hope you don't have to do this at home. I'm gonna turn it again, and now it'll even out a little bit. As it's cooking and it's getting really close to ready to flip, I'm gonna double check. Oh, look how well it moved. What you wanna do is see that it's not stuck on. Sometimes you have to go under there and kind of jiggle it a little before you go and flip it to be sure that um, it's not going to stick. The reason it's not sticking and you're not picking up the you know iron from the pan, which is not the kind your body's supposed to eat or assimilate, is because it's very, very well seasoned. We do not clean this with soap and water. We, we wipe it out and we use um, hot water and dry it really well before we put it back to store it for the next time. This is almost ready to go. And with three eggs in here and the cheese, we're gonna get mm, 35 to 40 grams of protein. And uh, we do put pasture raised butter on top. It's ready. Okay, watch this. Flip like this and comes right off the heat so that it's going to be ready so soon and it won't overcook on the other side. Shutting this off and here comes approximately two ounces of cheese on one side. So before we clean the pan, we actually scrape it, um, scrape off chunks of uh, cheese or eggs make it really easy to do which does work better hot but I'm not going to show you that because we're making my husband's omelet right after this one right after the other and depending if I'm going somewhere and have less to eat 
later I'm gonna be extra active I might put a little more cheese but that's about the right amount about an ounce there and about an ounce there and then watch this set this down it's still off the heat remember and we're gonna flip it like this leave it in the center kind of press press it down a little bit and it's gonna melt for a second while I do some other things this is a great time to do this the handles not real hot because it cooks so fast well we have dogs and one of them is a particularly good German Shepherd watchdog and the other one's just a loud mouth okay and a watchdog there okay you can turn the film off please you've done it right the cheese will be melted and it will transfer we like little plates because if the butter runs off you can kind of dip your your bite in it without it being wasted on too much plate put it across like this and it's ready to be buttered we use raw cheese and we use raw pasture-raised organic butter in some states you can only get it sold as uh, pet food or like the Amish kind of allowed to do some things like sell it where it may be hard for other people to do it legally and usually you can get it through a farmers market or other connections so in some places possibly ours this is actually kind of black market or legally sold as pet food that's a lot of butter but it's raw it's not been pasteurized which makes it totally different to digest than pasteurized even if organic than pasteurized butter and then since we believe in a lot of salt because we're our blood is supposed to be very salty I put a generous amount of salt on it more other things would have more salt but the cheese itself is salty so this is ready to eat by the way I have a great heart rate great blood pressure and my CAC my coronary artery calcium score was zero so also this is great hormone food egg yolks and butter and all that cholesterol are what makes our <laughs> interruption they are what I was trying to say all this cholesterol is absolutely critical for every cell membrane for your brain and to make hormones especially sex hormones and adrenal hormones hey thanks for the interruptions Lilu thanks a lot uh oh today is Sunday when we typically have a feast this is 100% grass-fed beef it happens to be chuck steak, which actually is a chuck roast that we had cut into steaks. It's definitely a day to feast. These 100% grass-fed local chuck steaks have been cooked to be as rare as we can reasonably stand them. Mine is um, medium rare, my husband's is rare. And we put approximately one tablespoon of grass-fed raw butter on them not really necessary but um it really uh, tastes better and after all this is our feast and probably one meal today these are called my best fat bombs yet i'm cutting them i have a video called my best fat bombs yet which are explaining how i modified them from being called decadent keto dessert no bake cinnamon version if you just look up on my channel my best fat bombs yet on my ketogenic playlist you will see them each square I'm putting some in here um, well I'd say about two to three of that size are one to two grams of total carbs this is how I cut them it's kept in the refrigerator in between what you see on top are cacao nibs which I mentioned I added and I add them when I make it and I press them right onto it I'm loading the little dispenser container and see how they pop out watch see just like that and we use them just before a meal if we're hungry and we're foods not quite ready yet or just after if we want to stay full longer I'm going to cut one more strip 
And again, you just look up my best fat bombs yet, where I tell you how I modified decadent keto dessert, no bake cinnamon version to make them even better. And I'm gonna cut this one more time, like this. This one's gonna get a little one over here. They travel well if you don't keep them out of the refrigerator longer than, say, a few hours. They store best, of course, in the refrigerator because there is coconut oil in here and it will soften as it gets warm. I'm gonna load this much and have them ready for when we need them. I'm going to show you my mini meal. By the way, this cheese is the same as this. This is a half pound and this is a whole pound. What I do when I have to travel, and I've already set this up, when I have to be away from home for my what I call my second or mini meal, is I pre-cut this stuff, put it in a container with a lid like this, and I take it with me. It'll keep pretty well, even though these will soften. It'll keep pretty well uh, for, you know, a half a day without getting too soft. And I pre-cut this. Notice these are cut a little bit. I'll show you. A little bit smaller to be super bite size when I'm in a hurry and my mini meal where I also include one of my ketogenic drinks for digestion yeah is about this much which is maybe an ounce and a half of this raw organic pasture raised cheese and it's about the equivalent of two full servings of fat bomb maybe two grams of carbs total here and about one, one and a half here total. So three grams or less of total carbs, maybe a half gram in the lemon water in my ketogenic drink for digestion. And I take it back, maybe five grams of carbs because I have a uh, four ounce container of organic roasted, home roasted pumpkin seeds. And these two are my second meal when I'm out. I'm going out today, so I have it ready.